we normally would see from an early lease pick. Uh, so G2 obviously relied on the Gnar and, and the Jace more than anything. And Mythic Alistar in, in this fight team just kind of outplayed NIP because G2 are just a better team. I think Trick had some pressure though, which is worth highlighting, but he definitely wasn't the main reason for G2 winning in that game. NIP though, Caitlyn Ban as we mentioned, Zack Ban normally what we see, but G2 did ban it last time. Might be the same in this game, so Ninja in pajamas should just not ban it and try and take that gamble. They can always ban the Zack with the last ban, worst case. Looks like it'll be the same so far. G2 debating what they want to take away. Last time it was Zack as mentioned. This time they're taking the Elise away. So you can just see how G2 also, they just want to play different styles. Now they can play the Zack style instead. First pick Zack, play full on 5 on 5, team fight, where before they clearly wanted to play the 1-3-1 one, one, early game focus style. Nico, Consulting Profit, talking about what they need to ban Syndra. Will be taken off the board, taken away. G2, what are they gonna opt for in this first pick? Zack? Zack is there, you gotta take it. Just switch up the styles. It's, it's all G2's doing right now. They're just playing different styles on stage against NIP. Kalista Maokai will still be a perfectly fine draft right here. Chogat is something you need to consider as well. Give up the Alistair. There's a lot actually of picks That's that true. we would consider uh, very powerful on the current patch up and available. Surprising to see so many of those tanks left through. I think the Rakan though kind of fills the same purpose right there as the Alistar. So even if you lose Alistar, you could get the Rakan and it's, oh, it's still fine. So there are a lot of picks right now for NFP. Cho'Gath, Maokai, Alistar, all three you might be looking at. Alistar also has a takeaway from Mithy who was very successful on it in the first game. They do go with the Maokai for now. G2, do they want to play Cho'Gath? Yes, they do, because now they're playing tank comp. Last game, they did not play tank comp. That's why they left it open. So this is the mix-up. This is the tank composition coming in, or at least being considered for now. But NIP keeping things consistent. However, that means NIP are going to have to change it up. No Cho'Gath for them to round out their first pick phase with. And what are G2 going to opt for here? So Alistar is still there to also deny Alistar Kalista, and you'll just build yourself a massive wall of meat uh. right in front of a Kalissa who needs about five minutes in a fight to actually kill these guys. And to be fair, it's very hard to lock down a Kalista as a lot of these tanks, but if a Zac, a single stretching strike from Zac yep. connects, a single headbutt pulverize, I, so easy to take out EQ. I think at this point, NIP almost have to just kind of change a little bit and actually try and say, we need a strong bot lane, we can snowball. Kalista, as a champion, is just awful if she's behind. If she's just even in the game, it's rare she deals more damage than the opponent AD carry as well. If she gets ahead though, which is what you can do because you can play around her so effectively, she can just take over the game. That's kind of the value of her. Her rend is fantastic on objectives. I think NIP needs to play around the bottom lane in this game to get HeQ rolling. Otherwise, he's never gonna kill Zack, Cho'Gath, Alistar. Because while he's busy doing that, Sven and Perks are just gonna kill the front line of NIP much faster. You have so much We don't even know what they're playing yet, Division. They're probably just gonna play Varus <laughs> again. They're just, okay, now they're gonna probably play like the Kork more, and then they're gonna kill me the faster. Definitely a tough spot to be in if you're NIP. Opting to take away the Varus, though. Definitely one of the stronger laning picks. Kogma would be quite vulnerable to the early Kalista here, but NIP debating. What do they leave for that last pick? What do they hide? Expect to see the support pick here, but could yeah. mix it up. I mean, I would like support here, and then you can still flex the Maokai to top, depending on what you want to play for potentially Profit or Shook. Uh, support here would make a lot of sense. It seems to be Trundle. Could also again be Trundle top lane against this Choga, and then you can still actually pick. Like, yeah. Right now, it could be Maokai jungle, Trundle top, and you pick a support. Could be Trundle support, Maokai jungle, or Maokai top. Uh, there is definitely a few different options. I think G2 yeah. debating though. Could be the Lucian lock in here for Perks in the mid lane. Long time since we've seen that in the 80 carry slot. Probably not going to be the choice, but Perks, big old grin on his face. Uh, he's like, yeah, it's time. It is. it is time. This man single handedly ruined Lucian's stats in the EU LCS. What? I, I believe the okay, Lucian's... Yeah, oh, it yeah. seems to be uh, Sven getting to play Lucian instead oh. against Kalista. Hold, come on, we don't talk about hoverovers, but if we were, things do not look good for perks on the uh, on Lucian. That we should say it anyway, even if he doesn't play it. All right, perks, looking at the stats. Oh, hmm. not quite, uh, I think, what you'd want to see from your mid lane Lucian. 9, 14, and 16. Two and three wins and losses. 
but it's going to be 80 carry Lucian. It's been so long since we've seen this champion in the bottom lane in EU LCS LeBlanc making her home in the mid lane. We know what she's going to be looking to do, but a lot of power on the individual carries here for G2, backed up by some pretty strong meta tanks. Yeah, and I feel like G2 are actually just valuing safety and mobility because it is a trundle support. So if you pick an AD carry with no mobility, there's a pillar appearing behind you, and then an enemy jungler shows up, and you're never getting out. Also with the possibility of something like Jarman getting picked, there's just no way to team fight as a low mobility AD carry against Maokai ulti, Callista ulti, pillar from a trundle, cataclysm, and shockwave. Like everything on the side of NIB would kill a low mobility target. So what G2 did, they drafted two of their most mobile targets they could for AD carry and mid lane. Even though Lucian is not the strongest AD carry right now, he does bring a dash to the table and he can peel for himself. To a certain degree, could be safe in these fights. Something they have to consider, a similar strength to what we see from Callista with that martial poise, the ability to maneuver around these tanks in the fight, deny so much of their, their burst combos, punish them for the lack of sustained damage we so often see from a character like Maokai who is so cool down reliant. Well, both coaches going to shake hands. We'll find out shortly if it's going to be the last time. Take this chance now. Head on over to Twitter, at LOE Sports, hashtag NIP win, hashtag G2 win. Maybe you believe in a support trundle, does shred through tanks. Worth considering. One of the tanks stack a lot of HP though, uh, which it still works against. Still but, scaling HP. Uh, there's some there, but not, a, not gonna take all the stats in the world to himself. Time to find out the crowd in an uproar. NIP versus G2. And this is it folks, this is game two. Do or die for NIP. For G2, we'll have to see, will they give up another Baron? Will they make those small mistakes? Or is this going to be the clo the clean closeout for G2 Esports? Yeah. If NIP lose this game, then they can't afford to lose any more games if they want to try and catch Rocket. They would also rely on Rocket losing every single game they have left in the EU LCS. So not very likely, of course, that these NIP guys are going to avoid that promotion tournament, but they are still showing some Good drafts right here, uh, I feel like. Uh, I actually like this one as well. Jungle Javan coming back in. Something we've seen quite a lot in other regions. Cinder Hulk Javan being quite successful. Interesting, interesting what we can see across the map. Sparrow and Hikyu checking out what's going to come through on the level one. Now, Trundle support, not something we've seen as much here in the ULCS, but you do see the power of the pillar right there. It does make it very difficult to maneuver. And there was one a small thing. A lot of people might have missed it in the patch notes that actually hurt Trundle support quite a bit. His pillar no longer gives vision when you use it in brushes. Uh, and that actually sucks because one of the cool things about him was you had a lot of cooldown reduction. You could use that to kind of face check. Um, no longer as effective for that. Apart from that, though, Trundle support, uh, a lot of what he likes to do is sit in the lane, Look scary, not really do anything. Get out of uh, landing phase, and then oh yeah, you got a point on click on that big fat tank. The thing that people don't appreciate. Oh look, it's a trundle with a sight stone. Oh, look, he just stole 30% of my tank's stats. Suddenly that trundle has the equivalent of 10,000 gold, buying absolutely nothing. 10,000 is a random number. Don't take that seriously. But a lot of gold for free. And also, the pillar is insanely strong in fights. It's a lot of like CC coming just from being the, uh, just around the pillar in terms of the slope, but also like blocking someone from actually moving around. Imagine you are a tank on the front line who wants to soak up damage so your back line can deal damage, and then you want to just kite in and out as this tank, and suddenly a pillar shows up behind you, you can't actually get out again, and you just get singled down by the NIP carries. That is what happens in fights against Trundle, and it's something we want to follow with Sparrow in this game here. Both teams have agreed. Take a lot of tanks, fight each other. G2 running a little we bit more into the fight each other part. We can assume it's there, but for now, Deficio, we're just in this landing phase. And, and the Trundle and the Callista taking control, waiting for Sven to get a few more levels. Kind of spell reliant here in the early game, but we saw there briefly on the top side. Profit, yes, he's getting the better end of farming, but definitely suffering. The Vorpal Spike, such an effective trading tool, and very often we see Cho'Gath you know, paired against something like a Gnar, something that can pressure it out, that can be safe, but that is definitely not the case for this Maokai. No, 100% uh, a free lane for expect up in the top lane. Uh, Maokai really is one of the weakest uh, laners specifically, but again, it's not why you pick him. It is purely for these team fights and the zone control of his ulti. So that is kind of the thing, again, about this matter is 
Some pick and man faces have very little focus on actual laning face picks. Like, ooh, I want to counter pick this lane so I can win the lane. Doesn't always happen uh, with the tanks. Oftentimes you actually pick for the composition instead, especially with supports. You can see Mithy and, and Sprattle here picking two supports that don't dominate their lane. Like, you don't pick these guys to make the big plays early game. You pick these guys, like the Alistar and the Trundle, because you want to be so valuable in late game fights. And that's why in the bot lane, you might not see a lot of action happen, because none of them are really looking for it. And we look across the map, action really going to come down to the junglers, where they're going to put their attention. Trick, of course, having not the most impactful game in game one on that Elise. Now, this champion, Zach hasn't been the best for him in the past, but he is looking to make an impact in the mid lane. Leaps forward, stretching Spice, going to connect to a minion, kiss, and maybe going to be the takedown here. First blood for Trick, right as I say it. Yeah. He comes in clutch. Nagne did not flash away instantly, and then you see the chain CC getting put down. No cleanse from Nagne to get out of anything either, meaning that Trick and Perks together, just combining chains, the smack together with the Q from Trick. And then suddenly, you have a dead mid laner who didn't even get to use his flash. Terrifying spot for the Orianna to be, too, because we normally expect her to go safe, but now we look at the bottom side, you can see the pillar kind of playing hell with how Sven wants to position. So basically, I think the only way out for Narkna right now is if he kind of expects this one and he flashes as soon as he sees the jump in. Uh, he doesn't flash, he actually uses his E instead, buffers that one up, so he's trying to get himself a shield, and then there's really no way out, and uh, he knows. Uh, it's, it's one of those moments where you're like, why didn't I just flash? I knew it as uh, soon as it hits me. From I'm like, talking to LCS pros, it's one of those moments where you're like, why didn't we ban Zach? That might be another one. Because that's the awkward situation. The second that stretching strikes connects, you are pretty much doomed. Especially because G2 banned the Elise. They, mm -hmm. the uh, enemy had the last ban in, in that first phase. They could have just said, okay, clearly you're changing your style away from the early game right now. Uh, as you can see here in these trading patterns in the bottom lane, Trundle does nothing against Lucian because it's really easy for Lucian with a dash to just kind of ignore the pillar. Uh, and it just means that Sprattle uh, is not really helping his AD carry. No, but you can see he is at least mitigating the impact that Mithy brings to the table. And for now, he yes. is winning the 1v1 trades. And additionally, both these supports with a lot of hidden sustain in their kit. Yeah, and then there's Relic Shields and there's Alistar heals. So no one should drop low enough for them to suddenly die out of nowhere. And you see oh. a fight. He's going to get interrupted. Sprottle running in on the Sven, dishing out what damage he can. We'll get stunned up by the Alistar. Ooh, Hikyu right there, not trusting Sprottle at all, just flashing away because Mithy had a stun lined up. But Sven was stuck really far away from the actual fight, and Sprottle still had exhaust ready. Hikyu definitely did not have to flash away, but I think he just wants to try and play it as safe as possible and ends up using a summoner spell. Now moving forward, Chains Kai. It's just there's nothing you can do. My God, LeBlanc paired with Zach. I can't even say anything about that. It's 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 beautiful and also horrifying. It this is, year. and this is something that uh, it, it's kind of fun because you'll be mid laners before Rift Rivals were like, nah, LeBlanc is too risky. Yeah, don't Not really want. Good. Don't really, she just relies on snowballing too much. Don't really want to play her. Uh, we saw some of the NA teams of Rift Rivals abuse the European teams with this and just camp mid, camp mid, camp mid. G2 Esports are doing exactly the same in this game. Uh, they're playing around perks, obviously punishing Nagne twice now, almost double the CS for perks at level six. A massive advantage. And I like this adaptation of issue because earlier when we saw the Casio matchup, Nagne was doing incredibly well against perks. Casio versus Jace for the vast majority of the early game. G2 now adapting as we come into game two. Shutting down that mid lane, not giving Nagne even a remote chance. 15 CS, two assists into the hands of Perks, the Hextech Revolver, just to make it even easier for him to win out on these trades. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that you come back from in the laning phase. You can see now Nagne, he can't approach that way. <laughs> and Perks is tanking two tower shots for free. He's I mean, so luckily, then Perks still two tower shots right there, and obviously Nagne won the trade, I guess. So, well played. But <laughs> you walked to the tower. <laughs> Maybe a little questionable from the G2 mid laner. But Perks is saying he has sustain now. Look at that gun. Right there. It's not, it doesn't give spell. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's actually it's been one. like two years. I don't doing? know. I just saw the gun. My brain went there. I should have said instead the corruption Stop potion Stop watching with your Steel. season three VODs. Deficio. It's definitely less than two years. Probably true. The Hextech items. Wait, maybe that is two years. It's only Gunblade. When, <laughs> yeah, maybe. When did we get portal belt and stuff? I don't okay. remember it, so it's the worst thing. Is if anyone ever asks you historical questions outside of esports teams, I'm like, 
Oh, Cinder was released like what four yeah. years ago now. Obviously, I assumed last also, year. Due to me getting a bit older, my eyes are not the same anymore. I thought it was a cutlass with some life steal Drake. Are you also colorblind? Right there. Yes, I am. Oh, and I'm so sorry. Actually. Don't make fun of me. Uh, and then suddenly, it all makes sense what I just said. No mistakes made. Okay, no mistakes. By the way, best production team ever. They have uh, called me, called it in to help me burn you. 6.9 would be uh, the proto belt changes. So not two years ago. So not two years ago. Added is when proto belt was added. So that would be the removal of. Uh, was that when we changed man. it? Probably. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, just unlucky mistake. Spectator buck, I believe. And uh, we're right back into this game, which is more important, because look at uh, Trick. Okay, yes. Now we look across the map. Look at Trick. He's uh, he's looking for a play, Trick, as if you can just focus on the game for a moment. All right, Trick on the bottom side. Sparta luckily clearing out a bit of vision that could set up the bottom play. Unfortunately, Oriana is so absolutely behind in the mid lane that there's nothing that she can do. She has to sit in that mid lane. She has to just wait, accept that Perks is going to push her I in, know. and cannot come for these plays. And it only gets worse, because soon Perks will get more sustain and he can actually really start taking tower shots. It really gets tough in the mid lane. Now the fight breaking out, though. Block. Gonna pull him out, let's bounce. Ooh, combined with the headbutt, but Shook trying to make it out. Flash out to safety, has to burn everything, but will walk away with his life button. Maybe not, Perks leaping forward. He looks for a little bit more exhaust, not gonna be enough. Suddenly, Spottles pulled back into the team, but luckily the Fate's Call gonna save the day. DQ doing what he can to clear the wave, because he knows there could be a dive on the way. Perks alive and well, cooldowns. Minty is tanking up the tower, that's the headbutt. Waiting on the pulverize, trying to stack it up. Can he get the auto stun, leaving forward. There's too much CC and IP are being destroyed in this exchange. Profit will save the life of Spottle, but that is all they're gonna get. Uh, more kills here for G2 Esports. Once again, Perks roaming as well. They want this tower right now, they want some kills Two. Leaping forward, expect trying to find the knockup. Perks coming over the wall, throwing down the chain. Prophet going to leap over the wall, trying to make it out. Knows that only LeBlanc is on that side. Now walking away. Grump. Grump. What? He was in a good fight. escape from <laughs> from Prophet. Gito did not get any follow-up kills right there. Now I'm gonna find Neither did some the time. Grump. Neither did the Grump. Could have maybe gotten one or two had it been a bit more active. Luckily, though, this does mean that Nagne has been able to recoup a lot of the CS. Unfortunately, Trick is also here. Yeah, so, so is Profit. Gonna stick the two minions together. Uh, luckily, there's one last minion to tank it up, and Nagne is smart enough not to hit the Zac in midair, so he's just gonna walk away. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we see Nagne catch up and farm a little bit. We see Profit be behind, of course, in his lane, but he knows he's gonna just get Righteous Glory and then try and be impactful in team fights later on. Rift out is started right now. All of it, G2. Either stuck in a lane, I've just gone back to base. So you can see Sven is back towards bottom lane, Mithy is still in base, Cho'Gath went back to top lane. Meaning NIP will actually secure this Rift Hell. Good play, gotta say, NIP playing excellently around the back timers. You can hear the crowd excited about that. Expect gets stuck in the wall. Perfect Trundle Pillar coming in from Spawn, but they have to respect the potential for the engage. Trick trying to tie two people together. Now Kiss, gonna get the chain knock up. The CC coming in, let's bounce right back under that tower. Oh, doesn't even need man. the shot. My god, G2 are just too far ahead. What is this champion? Double kill coming in now. And man, Trick also just played that so well. Great combination from him. Zven gets a bot lane tower. Well, don't forget Mithy, man. Following it up with the headbutt pole, immediately lets bouncing him back. It is true. It I feels pretty good when your opponent can't actually push buttons. Let's see. Let's count the amount of time okay, okay. where people can actually push buttons once the Zac comes in. NIP gets that Rift Herald, and then they're like, we should make more plays. Trick comes in, Trick goes out, fight in mid. Wait, Nagne is this is not dead. a replay? I feel like we've seen this before. Nagne, uh, one more. Auto flash. Oh! oh. Ooh. Not a replay. He Outplayed. stayed alive. Nice. Nagne going to survive. Shook may not so lucky. He... All right, I'm really upset about Zach right now. Zach is just really good at this, uh, you know, jumping in people's faces and kill them. Expect once to start playing tower, he's two levels above uh, Profit. And I do believe this game here, 12 minutes, is pretty one-sided. Pretty heavily in favor of G2 Esports. And this is sort of what we expected coming into the series. We expected dominant performances from G2. They tried the 1 3 1 in game one, but maybe after the Baron and IP fighting back a little bit, they just decided to. Just what well, you're pointing at the build water. To say it, say it, Deficio. Look at that sustain from Perks right there. That is sustain. I can't take that one away from you. It's back, baby. Well, Rift Child coming in as well.
NIP, this might be their one boom. Should Ooh. spamming laugh. Great use here to avoid the perfect game. There you go. Now we look at G2, we look at the standings, we have to remind ourselves this match is actually very important for G2. They are in a neck the neck race with the misfits. NIP on the opposite side need absolutely every win they can get. So crucial that maybe NIP look to improve some things here. However, after such a brutal early game, you're just not going to get the same chances you got last time. You said boom really loud, but it only had half health. It was like a, like a boom. And you went for the full boom, but I respect it, Mr. Audience Member. Is POW better than boom? I don't know. What is the tier list of sound We're going to need to ask the people who made 1960s Batman. He'd be like, POW! That's also kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not as cool for Rift Herald. That's more of a boom. A bang. I mean, I'd pitch it. Anyone? Rift Herald skins? 1960s Batman Rift Herald? Could be nice. Uh, Perks wants to try and kill Nagna again. Pokes him for now. Yeah, it's just going to back out. Has to respect the potential for the shock wave there, so... Gonna give him some respect. Gunblade has now come in, so that is... Sustain. Got it. And it's gonna make it a lot easier for him to win out on these trades. See, that's green too. I thought that was the idea. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I thought he just had I mean, six minutes. The, the six minute gunplay. Hey, that I, I've seen that one before for sure. He's snowballing. Spraddle is doing his job as a support. Even if you are behind in solo queue, guys, you still need to get your deep vision. Sadly, you might not even get to use the wards because the enemy team is playing in your jungle and then it kind of feels bad. But at least you can say you did your job, which that's is also nice. important. Very true. Well, Shook is also doing his job, giving See? a blue buff over the mid lane. He's gonna find Cho'Gath right there. This might mean that they're more comfortable forcing a play on the top side. Unfortunately, Perks uh, dictating the pace of this game as he pressures in on the mid lane. And as you can see, G2 are kind of busy on the other side of the map, so they don't really care about those wards being placed because they're trying to pressure this top lane tower and maybe roam mid lane and try and dive onto Nakne without that flash. Trick at least is still in there. Uh, Perks is being annoying. Looking forward, Nakne taking so much damage. It's... I, there's just nothing you can do against LeBlanc that fed. It's unfortunate, but it is the case. Nogne with no flash, no heal means that one combo combined with that gunblade is just more than enough to seal his fate. Prophet wanted to be the hero. TB straight into the mid lane as soon as the fight broke out, and then it means top lane tower is gone. Everything is just dying left and right. Finally watch this game. Shook is going to kiss the raptor. Not what he wanted. Will not get pulled out, though. Pillar actually going to save him. Well played, Sprottle. See, I like this because G2 makes some really cool plays, and then there will always be a play just in between where they miss everything. Uh, we saw one in the bottom lane before where the Grump joined the action, no one died. This one, the pull there from Trick actually knocked Shook out of the chain from Perks, it so it didn't land. And then Trick ends up using his ulti to get just the Raptor out. So it's, it's good. They're kind of like having good fights and great uh, and bad fights. Well, this one is going to come in. So do the kitty cats. Look at them run. Let's, now Sven's just gonna trick. That was rude. Sven now in trouble. Actually, could maybe go down here. Will get deleted immediately by the tank lineup on the side of NIP. But they may not have enough damage to keep this fight going. Perks trying to find a chance up against the team. But how it has to run for his life. Sprato is fearless on the front lines, taking those tanky stats away. Oh, oh baby! Jarvin, that's the shutdown. You may not win the one v one, but LeBlanc still can't take everybody down. Zen was playing such a safe game, just farming, doing nothing, not joining any fights, and then suddenly he sees his jungler, a fit, tangy Zack, leave him to the cats. He gets rooted, fight starts, like, so this is uh, obviously a trick zoning them off the tower, but because they all end up kind of diving and taking some damage, look at this thing, trick right here. Could have just <laughs> taken it for his guy with his passive up, but he was on the tower, to be fair. Flashed it, Sven did not expect that. Had his own flash ready to leave it. He ends up dying, and now it's actually a pretty cool fight from NIP. Making the call that they can still chase down perks, and all the damage is gone, because it's Alistar, Zack, and Joga. So they just all dive on to perks to get the shutdown. Sadly for them, uh, it's not on main cares, but they still, of course, spread a lot of the gold between each other, so worth it in the end. We look at the last fight. Uh, you know, damage in team fight graphs are weird to read in the tank meta, but you can see that Cho'Gath and Zach making their impact to a certain degree. Perks, no surprises there. But Sven, Sven didn't get to participate in that team fight the way that he wanted to. Uh, partially due to tricks, so we're have to, gonna have to hope in the future. Either Sven will be a little bit more willing to burn the flash, but on the side of NIP, they're happy to have that small win. It's not gonna give them a lead. It's not gonna put them back in the game, but it will relieve the pressure. It will give them another chance to find a similar play. They need a lot of those plays, as you just highlighted right there. Need to see G2 be over aggressive as well. Um, 
This is the kind of game where G2 Esports normally in Europe never really drop the ball. Like, they are so good at consistently close out games. It's always been one of the main strengths of the team. As soon as they got Mithy and Sven on the lineup, of course, very vocal members, a lot of experience, played that macro game for many years back on Origin as well. So it is rare we see them kind of completely drop the ball, but uh, Perks right now wants to keep trading, and these are the kind of moves that NRP are kind of looking for, where G2 are jumping in under the tower and hope that someone makes a mistake, maybe gets caught by a pillar, maybe they get instantly CC'd by someone and they might actually get, you know, poked down. Perks is continuing to be a nuisance. Has taken almost zero damage over the course of tower diving twice now. Just leaping out before he can take any real damage. One tower shot going to be mitigated by the sustain he has on the itemization. Nagne has to be miserable, but Perks could put himself in a hard spot here. He's going to leap forward. Alti will come out. Prophet now may have overcommitted. Both sides going to back off. No one going to grab much of anything, but Shook's ultimate has been burned. So we got the Rift held. Sorry, the Infernal Drake being alive. Same thing. Again, you can see old vision of mine. Hmm. Getting worse and worse. Might get another fight though, because uh, NMB are not going to give this one up for free. They definitely want to try and get back in the game. We saw last game how important the fights around objectives were for NIP. They have still a very strong team fighting composition. Want to utilize the objective control this Callista provides, but in goes Trick. He's going to try to connect together. Doesn't look like he's going to get the opportunity, but it's expect on the backside. May look to eat. The mid laner is going to get him down in the end. Suddenly the Maokai is looking for the disengage. He's pulling back. The Callista's still alive. Still dishing out damage, but Trick is going to just knock these tanks together. Sven is dishing out the damage. Sven Perks is moving forward. The LeBlanc looking to cut through the last bits of resistance on the side of NIP. GQ running for his life, but it's just not enough. Perks is too strong. Profit is out of time, and that's going to be the fight for G2. And a great fight here from G2 Esports. They play him so well. Expect coming in from the flank. Great CC setup for him to land that feast onto Nakta. And of course, with this massive goal lead, you should win these fights here. But Jesus still managed to execute them very cleanly. Another great fight from Mithy as well oh. on Alistar. This is actually a tactic. You're delaying his respawn timer so that they'll be desynced and your team can actually take Baron uncontested. Oh, I think Perks also wanted to kill him with the gunblade, but it wasn't ready. It's ready now. Stop gun violence, folks. If you just waited. Five more seconds. Let's see it again here. So, massive goal advantage. G2 wants to take this fight. Trick goes in, and while he doesn't land anything on the first engage, look at how expect while he gets CC'd, then Mithy follows up on their Oriana, meaning that the Cholov will eventually get in range to just use his feast and actually just pump it down. Sven on the mobile AD carry, trying to get up his to do something, and then Mithy sneaks around once again. Another great knockoff from him. This Alistar is clean. And NIP will lose the fight. And I actually think I spotted a Titanic Hydra on the way. You did? From Expect. You definitely did. Jarm's Fist uh, and the Tiamat. Yeah, obviously, again, uh, the active of Titanic Hydra with that extra bonus damage coming in, also based on your HP. And Jogath gets a lot of HP. That feels like synergy. It is pretty damn strong with the Titanic Hydra. And the fact that also. You get bigger and bigger as Chilgath. So at some point, it's almost impossible if you start to stand there and start spamming all the attacks away. And then what you can also do with Titanic Hydra is it's obviously used as an auto reset. So you can actually use your auto, use your E, and then use Titanic Hydra right after. And then you can auto right after again while the Titanic Hydra active comes in. Something definitely to consider. Titanic Hydra, a very strong item, does give that extra health scaling. Very good. Point is, within a very short amount of time, you can get a ton of damage. Definitely. If you look at the burst combo of autoing with the Vorpal Spikes, the Titanic Hydra coming in, uh, not only that, but also what appears to be the workings of a Gargoyle Stone Plate, potentially for the Cho'Gath as well, he can either auto Tiamat, auto and kill you, or he can push R and kill you, which is a pretty terrifying spot to be when you are Nagne or Hiku. Yep, exactly. And again, it's... Just a lot of damage coming in a short amount of time. Let's see the fight. Pull back. back. Dead. That's Shogun. Now we can forward. Trick trying to get the let's bounce, not going to connect. Perks taking a lot of damage in the exchange. G2, no Baron buff to push in any further, but definitely still getting the better end of all of these trades. And Deficio, we look across the teams. We look at the stakes present for both these guys. NIP. In a spot where they can't really afford to keep losing games. They can lose this one against G2, but 
Yeah, see if they want to force a fight here, maybe start to turn things back. However, 12k gold lead. Probably going to be 13 here in a second, as Perks is just waiting to one-shot someone. Although, maybe. Well, he's a blind, though, so uh, he wants a little bit of time. It's not as one shot he has There's a Baron be. happening right now. We uh, missed it because we're watching Perks try to kill everyone simultaneously. G2 are taking a fight, 3v5, and they may just win it anyway, expect on the front lines. NIP are backing off. Uh, they are simply too strong. The Jogath, the LeBlanc, the Alistair, more than enough. Sprawl going to run. Perks now on a oh, rampage. Please. Oh, oh, shook. shook. Actually got in there. <laughs> Tried to see if he can steal it. Didn't happen, though. Uh, I guess the last try from him. 14k, 14.4. This is probably the final nail in the coffin of NIP, at least for this series. It's a tough spot to beat if this year, but unfortunately, yep. I feel like G2 are just a better team in this series. Game one, we had a bit more back and forth, a much calmer early game, but this time, Perks taking a page from the book of NA, as you mentioned, but dominating, putting that focus in the mid lane, and it definitely paid off. Zero, four, and two for Nagne. It's always funny also with Perks because he has these moments where he suddenly wants to play the blank again. The guy was like so famous for this. Like he played so many assassins in his first split in the LCS and it was all about trick and perks, trick and perks, like making plays together. And then you see like a, a moment where the meta shifts away. It's all about the bot lane or the top lane and perks plays all kinds of different champions. And then suddenly from time to time he finds his way back on an assassin like LeBlanc teams up with Trick once again, and they make some of these plays happen where suddenly he has two early kills at six minutes, and the enemy mid laner is out of the game straight away. So want to see that Satanic Hydra DPS though from Expect, so they butchered the point a little bit before, but obviously you go in, first auto attack with your Warble Spikes, then you use the active of the Titanic Hydra, and you auto attack again with, once again, your E active, and you actually deal so much like instant damage from just like these two autos and this active from Titanic all scaling with HP. So the fact you just stack HP is fantastic. And you also have additional engage from the team. We can see what Trick and Mithy have been doing, being not only a strong front line, but also just insanely consistent in how often they can force the fights in the favor of G2. Baron buff now backing them up means they still need to wait for a creep wave. They are strong, but still can't afford to all out tower dive and inhibitor in a 5v5 mm -hmm. and perks. Now taking up uh, precedence in a side lane. They probably, I mean, they can try. Uh, if you get expect in range to kill someone real quickly, it probably will work. Uh, does have the flash up and available. Yeah, and Mythic can tank the tower, right? And so can Trick. So at this point, I don't think anything will stop G2 except for the fountain. Never dive the fountain. Definitely the case, Ben. Not going to get caught out again. Luckily, has the dash, relentless pursuit. Bit more of a relentless escape this time around. Yeah, this has been the most boring game for Sven ever. He saw that come from NRP and said, you know what, I'm not gonna play this AD carry without any mobility that just gets like killed by basically every everything on the side of NIP. And to be fair, the one fight where he did not use any of his mobility did die immediately. Yeah, he did die. So his uh, job has been actually just wave clear, push towers all game long. Oh, nope. GQ pulled in. Now guy going in on the side. That's the Jogath one shot. There is no escaping it, folks. G2, they're looking for the dive. They're taking him down. Does not matter what stands in their way. The gold lead is simply too large. He's diving in on the fountain, but unfortunately, this is as expected. Perks is going to make it out. Does leap right back in, though. The chain CC is clean on the side of G2. Already ripped through the vast majority of the lineup. Profit and Sprottle, probably not enough to hold on here, but they may look for the 2v1 against the Cho'Gath. Sadly, this is a little <laughs> bit Cho'Gath favored right now. Definitely heavily Cho'Gath favored. Look at the grin on Perks' face, man. That, that, that is a man who knows he has won the game and is happy to take risks, like diving into the fountain. But Hiki was here. Uh, but probably not going to be enough. Whatever happens right now, G2 having a little bit of fun. No chance for NIP to come back. You gotta get the KDAs up and running. You gotta get some fantasy points as well. Expect Feast is soon ready. Will he get another one? Lead forward, looking for a little bit more. But G2 taking their sweet time. Style points coming in to close it out at the end of the day, folks. That is going to be the series. G2 Esports decidedly taking down Ninjas in Pajamas. So everyone was looking at this game and saying G2 Esports, they're looking back in form. Maybe not MSI level yet, but they're definitely getting up there. They're running, you know, chasing for that first place. They want to keep Misfits behind them. They want to catch Fnatic. 
So them obviously taking down NRP 2-0 is not a massive surprise. Uh, I think in game two, they can be very happy with how they did it. Uh, game one, they were clearly testing as well. And that's what we saw. Right? One game running early, game one, three, one. Next game, pick a ton of tanks. We can also hard engage. And two different styles from uh, G2 executed. They win the series. Yeah, very solid performance. Exactly what we expected from G2 in so many ways. And from NIP, we've mentioned this before. Bottom of the standings, fighting to stay out of relegation. It's do or die now. They need to win every single match ahead of them. They need Rawcat to lose. And that's a tough spot to be when your fate is not entirely in your hands. But for G2, continuing to climb up the standings, looking to contest Fnatic. When is that? That would be August 12th, folks. Week 10 on the Saturday game we're looking at. But uh, honestly, uh, expect getting his Satanic Hydro Cho'Gath. Glad to see it. One of the things about Cho'Gath that is so obnoxious is that he's as tanky as the other tanks, if not even more because of Feast. And again, he deals damage. Like, Maokai deals no damage to you. So it's fine. You can stand against the Maokai. It's kind of like you're not killing me. The Cho'Gath will kill you, and you can't kill him. So they got him and Zack. Like, most of the time, people would look at that and be like, no, 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 no. That should never happen. No, but sir, sir, please, I'll have a different pick, man. NIP, they, because of game one, they probably didn't expect uh, G2 to just switch up the style and run the Zack and the Cho'Gath. Because it was Zack being banned in game one by G2, and they gave Cho'Gath over to NIP as well. And I think uh, that just caught NIP a bit. And we have to say, I mean, for G2, this is exactly what they wanted to have. We are right now setting up for a Mythi interview. And you can see how sad Sven is that he had to play Lucian in this game and just kill towers and nothing else. Like, it was Sven, a rough game sad? for him. He's, He's so smiling. sad. He wanted to play sad. Hyper Carry. He Looks couldn't get sad. to play it. We even follow him around now and see where he's going. Nope. Don't want to follow him They're trying anymore. to figure out if he's sad. He was. I saw it on I, his I face. I think he was smiling, but I'll take it as sad. It was a fake yeah. smile at the end. I mean... It was a solid game for G2. Perks dominating that lane, buys sustain early, works out for him quite well, we have to say. Did get that gun blade, as you <laughs> highlighted. I don't remember what else was said around the six minute mark. <laughs> who knows, who knows? I mean, come on, we can't keep changing items. How am I gonna keep up? I mean, you know that the tank meta is almost entirely because a bunch of <laughs> items were changed, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing that happens as a caster. Sometimes you, your brain just forgets for a moment, and then you say something and you're like, wait a minute. I mean, that I definitely said that. <laughs> definitely said that uh, Sven died for first blood last game, but he did not. It was HQ. Now, player of the series, though, from this one, one man who's not afraid to abuse those new items. Eventually, Deficial will learn that they do. But for now, all he needs to know is that they do a ton of damage, and they make players like expect look good. 12, 1, and 13. That KDA impressive performances on the Nar and the Cho'Gath. Definitely dominating his lane against Profit in both of our games. Yeah, definitely a good thing for expect that we are in this meta right now because uh, he can also play the Bruces. We know he can play, you know, Nar, Jarvan, Renekton, all these kind of different champions. So flexible player at the moment. Honestly, a, a series where you could look at any player on, on G2 and say, oh, this guy did pretty well, you know? Maybe you should get it. But I think expect is getting better and better, and that's important because he was one of the guys at MSI who, towards the end, actually started looking really good together with Trick, if you look at playoffs, and allowed G2 to perform well against the top teams, and they need Trick and expect to do well. Definitely was the case. Well, G2 took down NIP in this matchup. Let's see what Mithy has to say after that win. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm joined by Mithy. So first off, congratulations. You got yourself the 2-0, and zero, and it seemed like a very clean series overall for G2. Did you come in today, like, prepping something that you wanted to specifically work on for the team, or was it just generally, we're going to smash them? Um, I think NIP is a low-tier team right now, so we didn't really expect to lose to them. Um, we mostly focused this week on understanding our champion priorities for the new patch and like trying new stuff out and not just... We, we were basically having some issues when we got like the Brown, Sejuani, Kalista bands, because that's all we were playing in scrims, so we kind of like tried to learn new champs, new priorities, and just figure out the meta a bit more. Oh, understandable. And even if, like, in game one, you had some early game priority, didn't quite pan out as much, you managed to pick it back up in game two. Now, uh, it seemed like not just your series, but even the one before it, were a lot slower than what we expected coming into patch 7.14 last week. Why do you think the games have been so much slower to start? Um, I think there's a big discrepancy in skill between the teams, probably. And... That's the reason why one team can just get a lead and snowball it without the other team really contesting for it. So it just, it's slow because you just don't want to make mistakes and you just want to cleanly sweep them off. And 
I guess if the other team doesn't really force you to make any mistakes, you just play a slow game and win it. Well, that's fair, but I feel like it can get you caught just completely out guard one time because it seemed like you guys in the first game were not expecting NIP to rush down that Baron. What was going through your heads when that happened? Uh, well, Infernal Drake was up, so we kind of tunneled too much on it. I think we should have probably just kept playing on Baron and used the fact that we have super strong mid game to make them face check. And if they try to put too many resources into face checking, then we can just walk to Infernal and get it for free. So yeah, we got a bit surprised, but yeah, it's fine. Well, you still ended up taking the win anyways. And I've, I've been a little unfair since you guys had a pretty crushing victory. I want to get your thoughts on some of the things that have been changing down in the bot lane because you now brought out Alistair twice today. And it seems like that is suiting your style. Is that something that you like about this new meta? Um, back then, 2015, I would play the meta that is being played right now. Trundle, Braum. I mean, not really, but like Trundle, Braum, Alistair, uh, Cannon support, these kind of things was what I was playing back then. And that's kind of the meta that's back. But I feel like I'm really good at playing range supports too. So I'm just sad. I mean, I got my ass handed really, really hard on, at MSI and at Worlds. So I had to teach myself to play range supports. So I'm just kind of sad that now the meta is back when I'm pretty sure I, I can be really good at range supports now. So yeah, now I can just play everything, I think. Well, that's a good thing, especially with all, with all the new international stuff coming up. So last question for you, Mithy, then. Since you guys have been playing pretty well across the board, the G2 slump is over. What's the next big challenge ahead? Is, is there anybody else in your group you're worried about? Or is it all about that Week 10 showdown with Fnatic? Um, not really sure how the standings are and if we have any chance of taking over Fnatic or if Misfits has any chance of taking us over. So I think we'll just do our thing and try to get good and understand the meta the best we possibly can for playoffs and be able to adapt as fast as possible and just be like like the old G2 that was always the first to learn the game in Europe. And that's kind of what gave us the biggest advantage was the fact that we were just smarter at drafting and smarter at knowing what we wanted to play and how we wanted to play compared to other teams. So we want to be back at that level. And I think at the start of the split, we struggled on that because we just didn't have enough time. But I think now we've been able to catch up and now we're probably just going to like go past the other teams, it's pretty likely. All right, well, we'll see how you guys do coming into playoffs. Thank you very much, Mithy, and congratulations on your win. Thanks. All right, with that, we're going to send it over to Shox to wrap up the day. Let's take it away. Thank you very much, Pyra. And I am super happy to welcome Luka Perkovic to the desk. It's been a while since you've been on the desk, so Hello. welcome. Yeah, Thank congratulations. You. Good series, good series overall. Uh, we were talking a lot about the tank meta and what's it like for the top laners or junglers or the bottom lane, but what's it like for mid laners? Did anything really change for you? Uh, well, it did change a bit. Like the main champions like Syndra, Talia, Oriana, mages most likely are still in the meta. I mean, have been in the meta before tank meta has come here too because they're just strong lane and have strong teamfight presence. But before you could actually pull out assassins like more frequently, like I was playing stuff like Echo and Fizz and even Zed and stuff like that. But now when there is tanks, those champs are really inefficient. So you can never basically pull them out again. So basically you have to just play all the mages and find a maybe new mage pick or I don't know. Yeah. Jace is quite okay too. Like Jace and Lucian are okay for 80 picks. But as of Assassins, you can't really play Assassins. Not really I mean, Assassins. Le LeBlanc, LeBlanc worked out now, but uh, I don't think LeBlanc is still like so strong in this meta. It's kind of like a risky pick, so it's very often banned instead of like picked, you know. Well, Vedius was mentioning that yeah. you just need to put resources into LeBlanc. Yeah. You can't just pick, pick It's it. one of those ones that we saw NA make work really well at Rift Rivals, where they just kept ganking mid to the point at which they even sent their support mid lane multiple times to make sure the LeBlanc got ahead. Uh, and that was part of the reason why we thought European mid lanes were picking her up because you can see that you can do well with her, but I feel like EU teams have also just gotten better at being able to play around that kind of because this is the second time now that you've done that where you had it earlier on in the split after Rift Rivals and we had a level two Sejuani gank mid and then after that like Perks just went off on LeBlanc. So you can do it, you just need the investment. Well, Perks did it in this series and you guys close it out two to zero. Uh, meta wise, we were talking to Mithy and he said, well, I think we're back in our flow in terms of catching up to the meta really quickly. Obviously the big question is the meta isn't going to stay the same. 715 is around the corner, which also a lot of champion changes. So um, how confident do you feel that you've learned from kind of the slump to be better adaptive to metas in the future? Mm, well, I can adapt to any meta. It's not really a problem for me. I personally like to play every meta, like just so it's like um, um, 
so there's some difference because if you play only majors for one year, it's kind of boring. Yeah. But this year it's been like a lot of changes actually, like from supporting mid learners to majors to assassins to majors. So it's been quite a quite a ride for mid lane. Maybe now it's like a bit uh, stale, if you could say so. But uh, I, I don't mind so much. Uh, yeah. But one of the things that I feel like we here in Europe have always said about G2 is that they have been slow to adapt to manners. So can you give like your two cents on why you think this perception exists for G2 and, and why we think that you just you can't pick up these new picks or new strategies as quickly as others? I don't know why that, that perception exists. I didn't even know that existed, <laughs> honestly. Uh, it's just been now first time ever, I think, after MSI because we didn't have time to play as a team on a new patch and all the teams were bootcamping for three weeks before the split and we didn't even have time off. So there was mental burnout and the new patch and everything combined uh, caused us to be in a slump, let's say, the first five weeks and revivals. But uh, as soon as you like actually start uh, talking about meta and preparing and having more team talks and more team talks and working really hard, I think we are on top of the game and uh, just know the, like what to do. Yeah, I can't uh, remember who it was with the G2 member a couple of weeks ago already. I was saying that also just in scrims that it just feels better. You guys are having fun again in scrims and you're having fun again in the games, which I think is something when you lose it is very difficult to, to get back. So um, we think of G2 in terms of before Rift Rivals and after Rift Rivals. So would you say that was really the wake up call that needed to push you over kind of the, the little bit more to get back on the horse? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, I think we would have uh, gotten back on the horse even if there wasn't for revivals. Maybe it would take us a week longer because it was already like exploding uh, what we had. Not, not, not exploding, but everyone could feel it. So we were going to have a talk regardless. And uh, it's just good that it happened for us because... And revivals was also good because we got best run practice. Yeah. So it's better to go 1-5 <laughs> now than in world, right? That's true. The NA teams didn't get any good practice, but damn well if G2 <laughs> turned it all around. Well, uh, a couple of teams also in cross-group play have surprised us. Today was, again, coming back into the normal groups, and Vitality went up against the Mysterious Monkeys. Dominance 2 and 0 victory. Vitality and NM both had done good things in cross-group play, but I have to say I was quite impressed with Vitality today, how they closed it out, even though that playoff spot is mathematically very far away. This is something for them to be proud of. Yes, they, they seem to be drafting really nice compositions. I love the fact that rather than going for more of the, the full-on tank meta, we actually saw in game one a really interesting disengage meta where they demonstrated it's still possible to play things like the 1-3-1. One, one. And uh, they also demonstrated that they can also team fight as well. So Vitality at least demonstrating an element of versatility. Still feel like they're just a little bit slow in terms of their proactivity in the other game. Uh, I just want to see Vitality actually stepping up their game versus top tier teams because I think they have obviously now shown us that they are just like a middle pack. I don't know, they are right beneath the top teams and obviously better than all the bottom teams because they have actually, I think, 2-0 at the area of the bottom tier team. So they, they are actually a, a pretty decent team. I just something is lacking for them to pick it up versus better teams. Like they played only Fnatic and us, I think, mm -hmm. and Fnatic stomped them and we got, uh, we lost one game okay. and then we turned it back. But I think maybe they can put up a good showing versus uh, uh, unicorns and Well, teams. they do have a very tough schedule. They have H2K, they have the Unicorns of Love in the next couple of weeks. So um, when we look at Vitality, obviously we know that the last years even, they haven't been completely up to par, but now it's kind of a new leaf. They have Yamato, he's starting from zero. So do you think they are kind of on track or uh, should they have been a bit further now? I think, I think they can be good. I, I think so, yeah, I really think so. I just... Don't know if they can. I don't think they can make it in time. Maybe like, not in it's, time. It's one of those it's things. It's really too, too short. Yeah, time. yeah. It's, it's one of those things where you have so many expectations for Vitality, but then they never quite meet those expectations. And I think that they're definitely on the right track. Um, we talked a lot to Yamato, and he says that we built in the framework. We effectively had to build from the ground up, and I think that they're going at a steady rate. But as Puck says, if we follow the splice that. rate, then by next split, they'll be a top Precisely. team at the end of the spring set. So we'll have to track it. Let's take a look at the standings because Vitality have taken control of the fight for fourth place in Group B. Just one thing, Mysterious Monkeys mathematically cannot get playoffs anymore. I know it's not a big shocker, but uh, well, definitely important to say that as well. So we'll see how that evolves. Can just in pajamas get playoffs? Um, I think mathematically that's also impossible, okay. Perks, but thank you for also mentioning it. Um, but very interesting. 
In terms of the top three in each group, G2, second place and on the resurgence, and only one series win we after coming Fnatic. For Fnatic. You're coming for Fnatic. <laughs> We're so coming for you. <laughs> week 10, we've said it a million times. Week 10, Saturday, the 12th of August, write it in your calendar. So if the match was right now, how hard would you smash Fnatic? Uh, pretty hard, honestly. All right. <laughs> so then in two weeks, Still, yeah. <laughs> in two weeks, maybe the meta changes. So, so G2 <laughs> will not adapt. No. I don't know. Yeah. You'll see. Uh, do you, if you look at the top three across three groups, and Vervedius for you as well, who is like the biggest title proponent and who is an outsider chance for the summer title? Oh, um, I feel like, so personally, I think Fnatic is a little stronger than G2 right now, uh, simply because I think that they've uh, adapted really quickly to the meta and they've demonstrated that they have not only superly uh, extremely impressive individuals, but they can also play how the game is supposed to be played right now. And they seem to be really quick at adapting. So any sudden <laughs> changes, I think they'll pick up pretty quick. I just have to giggle because we announced it quick at adapting they, when they played certain AD carries yeah, 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 two weeks course, ago. But that but was the identity. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was. And it's also something that they've made pretty vocal that they just all decided it's time that we kicked uh, stuff together, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but also the team outside I'm looking at is Splice. I think like they're making really good growth. I feel like their consistency is improving, but they need to now prove it against the top teams as they go up against some pretty tough opponents even tomorrow. Do you have an outsider out of the top six? Do you think Misfits might be the one that could make a great run? Is Splice the one we're looking at? Mm, I personally like Splice. I think they could uh, they could do a good run. I think they could like surprise out of the all, all the other teams. Uh, besides that, I, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think any teams besides Fnatic will be like a, any contender anyways. So. It seems like all the other teams have some things to deal with. <laughs> H2K not able to beat the top teams yet. Unicorns of Love seem to be faltering a bit. Misfits is quite a wild card for me as well. So Perks might be right. G2 and Fnatic are the teams to look at. And you said about adapting to the meta. I actually think it's quite impressive of Fnatic that they're now on a fantastic record. They have changed their style up when it was starting to falter, even though they didn't do well at Rift Rivals. But they're having kind of the best split in seasons for them. So I think we have to appreciate the fact that with this lineup, they are, are making a great run in summer. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to deny the fact that Fnatic are playing extremely well right now. I'm excited to see what they can do moving forward. Saturday, 12th of August, yeah. going to be a very hyped day, um, but... There's no hype in getting two zeros. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the confidence that exists for G2. And for some of the other teams, like, I'm almost certain Maxwell will have that same level of confidence uh, going up against them tomorrow. Yeah, Perks uh, made the bet and you said we won't drop a game, but I think you can still be happy with what you've done after Rift Rivals because you're winning all the series. Or are you incredibly disappointed that <laughs> you couldn't send the Fisho to? I think we're like 5-0 now in a yeah, row or something. You are. But uh, I'm kind of disappointed. Like as I said before, like Mitty really wanted to lose a series because he says hey, it's really boring if we if we don't lose a game. Like, <laughs> you, like you don't feel a rush. So I was like, oh okay, okay, dude. If you want to lose some games, it's fine. It's fine for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, now I'm, I'll have to settle for the series because Mitty is too bored otherwise. <laughs> Mitty is too bored. I can see that the jokes are running again. It's kind of like the G2 spirit is back. I think I asked you in the beginning of the split, or was it last split, how big is the chance that um, G2 is the champion again in summer? And I think then you said like, almost 100%. How big is the chance now that G2 are our summer split champions? Uh, well, now like the chance is a bit lower. Uh, but I never cared about chances or mm -hmm. odds, uh, not against Varlit or against SKT, so uh, <laughs> I'm calling G2 for, for Summer Champions again. Yeah, I like that, especially talking <laughs> about MSI and SKT. But what I'm also super curious is about is who you think, because we are approaching that point now where like Worlds is a big talking point, and the top three teams that represent Worlds at the start, everyone was like, G2, Fnatic, UOL, without a doubt, easy peasy. But right now I'm thinking G2, what? Fnatic, still looking really convincing, but that third one, I'd love to know what Perks thinks. Like, who do you think could be that third possible team to go to? Work? Honestly, it could be like, li like literally anyone from the other six uh, or the other four teams. Uh, I don't have anyone like who could outstand right now. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Splice. I I, I believe in Splice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Then it would uh, be same as last year, except for H2K would be replaced by Fnatic. If that was the case, and I gotta say, for us though, it's cool that it's not 100% sure that yeah. G2 is gonna be Summer Split champions. I gotta say, it's a bit more dynamic, which is cool. So unfortunately for you, if it means uh, being in ah. a bit of a slump, but <laughs> yeah, this might even fine. be the first split that G2 do not get a buy in the playoffs as well. Actually, that that is true. That's important. It's gonna be really fun for me to play quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens, of course. Yeah, if that happens, and if, if you. 
don't win, I'm team. running this back to you. But uh, <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Well, let's take a look at what we've got on the plate for tomorrow. Time for the top teams to show their strength, starting with an important matchup in Group B between H2K that and biceps. Slice. Oh, that biceps is <laughs> uh, And that smile by Giancos, or it is a battle roar because he's going up against Trashy and Splice and Misfits versus Fnatic. Oh man, first up, Splice versus H2K. So H2K's record so far, the split, they haven't been able to beat Fnatic, they haven't been able to beat G2, they haven't been able to beat the Unicorns of Love. So this for me is quite a big test for them, and the same token, it's also a very big test for Splice. So Perks, what is your prediction as to how it's going to go and who's going to win? Mm, well, I think it's going to be a 2-1 for uh, Splice. What? What will make the difference? Uh... I don't know, I think Splice, uh, bot lane and top lane are maybe better than HKS, but I'm not sure. Would you say that that's something that's changed in time? I think especially the top lane could be a toss-up because Odawama ha has always been really good in that top Well, lane. Odawama has always been really, really good and Wunder has been a bit boosted like in the beginning of Split. <laughs> or I don't know when it was, like he was just running it down. But I think Wunder is uh, quite good now again and uh, I think that uh, overall it's just a really close matchup, but... Uh, and then H2K, I think, has a stronger mid lane point, but mid lane is not so like 1v1 one one anymore. It's just about the team, uh, how you play together. So, and Sankuk has always been like a really good team player, and he doesn't care about his lane that much. So he's, so I think maybe Splice has an advantage. I'm, I'm not sure though. We'll That's see. Difficult. I think you're gonna see a severe clash in styles where. Typically, Splice have not been a super proactive early game team, and they've usually been very good at punishing the mistakes that other teams make. And H2K typically are an early game focused team that build a lot of sno uh, snowball the early leads, and then they're really good at closing things out through good map play, good vision control. And I think it'll be really interesting to see whether or not uh, late game team fighting has improved from H2K, and whether or not they can play the slow early game into the strong late game, and if Splice can be more proactive in the early game, because it was something trashy was vocal about on PGL that he wanted to try and improve. Right, so who are you calling it for? Video? I, in my head, expect H2K to win 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two and one. well, we'll see tomorrow. The other one, Misfits versus Fnatic. Uh, well, obviously, we think that Fnatic is the stronger in this matchup, but maybe the meta has something to say about it, Vedius. Do you think it could go any other way? Uh, ooh, I think that if Misfits can stop doing dumb stuff, yeah. <laughs> because they have this tendency to get really good leads or be playing the game really well, and then they just see something that they don't think about, and they do it anyway. Baron. And the, yeah, Baron, Tower Dive, anything. And it could just, it goes horribly wrong, and it just happens too often. It's happened way too often throughout the split. And when we go back to one of our original stories, like, Max Lord's here to improve the communication. You're like, why aren't they communicating these sort of plays better? Why is the communication still not what it's supposed to be at week eight in the summer split. Perks, do you see Misfits beating Fnatic tomorrow? No, no? not really. I think Fnatic will 2-0 them. Unless there is a chance that like Cubs goes for some off-meta picks again and then maybe like runs it down a little bit and then like Misfits has a chance. But uh, other than that, I think Fnatic is just stronger on every position or the team play is also better. Uh, even though Misfits has had some strong early games, I don't think they can pull it off against top teams. So. We'll see. We will get all our answers tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining us, Perks, and good luck the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Vedius, for joining me. And time for us to log off for the night. Thank you very much, and join us tomorrow for two thrilling series in the EU LCS. Have a great night. Bye. He's